Okay, so those are the basics of lines. So let's go ahead and move on to parabolas and the quadratic equations that create them. So a parabola looks something like this. They can go up or down. They can be skinnier or fatter depending on uh, what the numbers are. And basically, if you have a parabola, the equation is going to be something along the lines of f of x or y, either one is the same, equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, so in this case, c is going to determine where your parabola starts, um, you know, how high up it is on your y-axis, and then A is going to determine how thin or fat your parabola is going to be. It also determines if it opens up or down. So if A is positive, parabola opens up, so it's going to look like a smiley face, and if A is negative, it's going to be like a frowny face, and it's going to open down. Okay, so if they were to uh, give you a picture like the one I just drew on the left, and then ask you what is the equation of this parabola, um, they'd, they'd give you obviously multiple choice answers for that. But the first thing to note would be that it starts up at 2. Okay, so we already know that if we're looking at f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, um, we know that our c is going to be 2. So we know that this is 2, which is a good thing to know, and we also know that this opens down, so a is going to have to be negative. So, for instance, if it were to say something like um, f of x is equal to negative x squared plus 2, that would be a nice a nice equation for this parabola because it's opening down and we also know that it goes up to and uh, referring to the b x part it's not left or right of the origin as well so we know that it is going on the you know it starts at the origin goes up to and then we can look at the curve from there Okay, so let's go ahead and, and go over what makes a parabola start not at the origin, um, what makes it thinner, fatter, etc. So there at the top left corner of the screen is y equals x squared. So the most basic parabola that you can get. So let's go ahead and go through and see what happens to the parabola as we change these numbers around. Okay, so um, number two. So y equals x squared plus 3. So same basic idea, except our parabola is going to start up 3 units. So we're pretending that at this point, um, that is where y is equal to 3. Okay, so if you add a number onto the end, it's going to go up. Now, basic idea, same thing. If you have a negative number, Instead of going up three units, here we're going to go down two. So we're going to start below the origin for this one. So it's going to look something like that. Um, all right, the next one is y equals one half x squared. So we change that a that's there. Okay, so for this one, we have same basic parabola. It's starting at the same place. And then because it says one half, and um, it's going to end up getting wider. So let's say it looks something like this. So smaller number of fraction here, it's going to get wider. If we have a larger number, so in this case 5, it's going to be thinner. So it'll look something like this. If we have um, y equals x plus 1 squared, then we're going to end up moving to the left. So we'd move over 1 and then have our normal width of parabola. If we've got x minus 1 squared, then we're going to move over to the right. Okay, so um, we can shift up, shift down, shift left, shift right, or we can compress or stretch. 
So, for instance, uh, like number four, you're stretching it out, and number five, you're compressing it. And all the other ones are just shifting left, right, or uh, up or down. When we talk about parabolas, it's really natural to also talk about quadratic equations. Because if you remember that uh, ax squared plus bx plus c equation that graphs as a parabola, that's a quadratic equation. So when you have quadratic equations, most of the time you're going to be doing one of two things. You're either going to be foiling them or you're going to be factoring them. So let's go ahead and foil an equation and then we'll factor one as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and FOIL x plus 2 times x plus 3. So FOIL stands for first, outer, or outside, inner, or inside, then last. So it's the order in which you do things. So first terms are x and x, so we go ahead and we multiply those. We have x squared. Then uh, if you're doing your outer, your inner, and then your last, you go ahead and say, okay, x times 3 is 3x. Then 2 times x is 2x, and then your last terms are 2 times 3, or 6. So then all you'd have to do is you'd say x squared plus 5x plus 6. So there you've foiled an equation. Now let's go ahead and start with an equation and factor it out. So it's doing the exact opposite thing of what we just did. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with x squared minus 4x minus 6 equals 6. So whenever you factor, you need to get your equation equal to 0, otherwise it's not going to work out so well for you. So we want to go ahead and do that. So x squared minus 4x minus 6 minus 6, because you're taking that 6 away. So you'd have minus 12 is equal to 0. Now the trick here is that you're going to set up x plus or minus something times x plus or minus something is equal to zero. So your numbers, the two numbers that are going to go next to the first x and the second x, they're going to have to add up to negative four and multiply to negative twelve. So if you're trying to think of things that multiply to twelve in general, um, you have like one and twelve, but those aren't going to add up to four no matter what you do. Um, you have 2 and 6, which could potentially work, um, and then 3 and 4, which isn't going to work. So you know that you're working with 2 and 6 in some way. So then the trick is, which one is negative? Well, if you're going to add them up and they're going to be negative, you want your bigger one to be negative. So x minus 6, and then x plus 2. So you notice negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4, which we want, and then if you multiply negative 6 and 2, you get 12, which is also what we want. So now your next step is just to set these both equal to 0 and figure out what your x's can be. So x minus 6 is equal to 0, which means that x can be 6. And also x plus 2 is equal to 0, which means x can be negative 2. So your two answers are x equals negative 2 and x equals 6. Okay, so uh, they're going to be asking you to do that quite often, either foiling or factoring. Uh, two little interesting notes is that when you are factoring, you're finding what x, when x is a number and y is 0, so those are x-intercepts. So if you are graphing, you know, in, in class generally, if you're graphing a parabola, that's one of the ways that you could figure it out. And then the other thing that's important to note are the kind of reoccurring classic quadratic equations you're going to see over and over. So let's go ahead and just quickly look at those. So the first one that you're going to see is the difference of squares, and that's x squared minus y squared. It's helpful if you know how to uh, find the factors of that. So if you're trying to factor that out, then all you have to do is it's x plus y times x minus y. That way your x squared is positive, your y squared is negative, and then you will have an xy and a negative xy, which will cancel out. Um, so that's one of them. The next one that you're going to see, different numbers, of course, but it's the same exact idea, is x plus y squared. So you should know how to FOIL that out. So let's go ahead and write this out kind of long form so we can see it. So x plus y squared is just x plus y times x plus y, 
And when we FOIL that, we'll get x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. And then the other one you're going to see a lot is x minus y squared. So again, you can write it out long form if that makes it a little bit easier to see what you're doing. And you're going to end up with x squared minus 2xy plus y squared. So the only difference between those two classic ones is that the sign changes with the 2xy. So it's 2xy in the first one and negative 2xy in the second one. Alright, so um, last thing to cover is the circle equation and how to work with that on the test. Okay, so the equation of a circle is x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared. And where you get that h and k is that h comma k is your center point, and then r is equal to your radius. So uh, if they give you if they give you h k and you know the radius, you could write down the equation just fine. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at a problem that asks you to figure out the equation for a certain circle. Okay. So a circle is tangent to the x and y axes at 5. What is the equation of the circle? So it might help to draw a circle, so I'm going to go ahead and do that on the bottom left. So uh, we know it's tangent at 5. So let's say that this is 5 and also along our y is 5. So we know that this uh, it's tangent, so it's going to hit these two points. So our circle is going to be something like that. Alright, so that's our circle. In order to use our circle equation, we have to figure out the radius and also what this central point is. Okay, so first thing to note about our central point is that we know the x-coordinate has to be 5 because it goes over 5 and hits, you know, the center bottom of the circle. And the y is also 5 because it goes up 5 to get to the center. So h comma k is equal to 5 comma 5. And then in order to use our equation, we also need to know the radius. Well, if we know that this line I'm drawing in, that's a radius, that has to be 5 because this line down here that I'm highlighting is also 5. So our radius is also equal to 5. So if we we're trying to figure out what the equation is, all we'd have to say is x minus 5, because that's our h, squared, plus y minus 5, because that's our k, squared, is equal to 5 squared, or x minus 5 squared plus y minus 5 squared is equal to 25. And that would be our answer for that. Okay guys, so uh, there it is for coordinate geometry. So our next video we're going to delve into plane geometry and you'll be seeing a lot more of uh, these circles. So great job and I'll see you in a minute.